All praise and glory and honor be to God our Father, to Jesus Christ the Son, and to the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Paul, in this passage that we read, this wonderful passage from Philippians chapter 3, speaks to us of something that is very wonderful, of something that is very needed in our lives, but also of something that is very misunderstood, especially nowadays, but even in the times of Jesus, it was very misunderstood. This concept known as righteousness. Paul speaks to us about righteousness. And many people have many questions about what righteousness means, what righteousness is for, how we can be righteous and in the same uh, breath also say that while we are righteous, we also love others. Because we have these examples of what we might call self-righteousness. People who see their works, they see who they are and what they do as putting them above other people so that they can look down upon them so that they can look down upon these other people and maybe uh, not see them as on the same level of spirituality or not see them on the same level of wisdom as they are. And many people see, especially people from the outside, they see the way we portray righteousness and they start to have questions about what it means to be righteous. What does it mean to be righteous? And why do we need righteousness in our lives? And that is what Paul speaks to us about in this passage from Philippians chapter 3. He speaks to us about righteousness. But before we can move on and really understand what righteousness is, I would like for us to uh, answer three questions specifically today. And the first one of these questions is, what does Paul mean when he says, righteousness. I would like to re read verses 2 and 3. It says, look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh, for we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. And we might be reading this and we might say, oh yeah, this sounds a lot like what we might think of as righteousness. Look out, it says here, look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh. These are evil things, things that go against God's plan for humanity, God's plan for us, Him who created us in His image and in His, His, His beauty and in His uh, plan, in His perfect plan. God created us and God has a plan for us and doing all these things mutilating our flesh, doing evil, being mean and rude and, uh, and attacking others is not part of God's plan of what He wants us to live out. And these are bad things and God tells us and Paul tells us, these are things that I've told you time and time again and it's not hard for me to tell you the same things and it is good for you to rehear these same things. Look out for these people. And this is what we call sanctification. This is what we call holiness in our living. A saint is someone who is set apart from the world. That is the definition of the word saint. But is setting yourself apart from the world, as in just simply being different from the world and not acting like the world, does this automatically equal righteousness? Because Paul does not stop there. Rather, he continues in verse 4 and he says, For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Our righteousness does not stop just at our putting ourselves apart, at our being different, at other people seeing us as different. Because if it would stop there, just at this works righteousness level, 
maybe we could go around and start seeing other people as inferior to us. Maybe we could say, just like the Pharisee that Jesus presented in the Pharisee and the uh, tax collector that went in the temple and they were praying before God and they, they came and the, the Pharisee comes before God with all his works and he says, I pray and I fast and I'm good and I give to charity and I do this and that and this and that. Lord, remember me. But does Jesus account this as righteousness to him. Rather, we also see the tax collector who is sitting there in the corner and puts himself in a state of humility and comes before God and says, Lord, I need you. I need you to help me. And Jesus says, which one of these do you believe went home accounted, accounted as righteous? Which one of these is righteous? The one who saw the power to be righteous in himself and in his works? Or the one who looked upon God? Because God is the only one who can give us true righteousness. The tax collector who came in humility before God. That was the one who went home accounted as righteous before God. Paul says we need no confidence in our flesh and in our works and in who we are. And he presents us a, a long list here of things in which he in his old life and who he was had many reasons if we were to stop at this fleshly, worldly, works level. Many reasons for which he could call himself righteous. He says, I was a Jew. I was of the tribe of Benjamin. I was of the party of the Pharisees. I was blameless in what regards the law. But did that count as righteousness to me? He says, on the other hand, in verse 7, But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss. I counted it as loss for the sake of Christ. The true righteousness that comes from God is the righteousness that comes solely from Him and through Him and our lives being in Him. True righteousness is the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ and through who He is and through the, what He works in our lives and through our lives. And that is the answer to what Paul really means when he says righteousness. And why do we need righteousness? Well, in verses 8 and 9, Paul says this. He says, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For His sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain. Here's what he gains. Christ. That I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. The righteousness that comes from God is worth more than all the works we could combine together is worth more than everything that we could do to gain ourselves a name for ourselves in, in the community of the church, is worth more than a million Sundays coming to church Sunday after Sunday and not caring about what is being preached. The righteousness that comes from Jesus Christ is a righteousness that changes our lives from inside out. Why do we need righteousness? To know Christ and to be found in Him. If we are righteous, and if we are righteous in this true way of being in Christ and Christ in us, then we will be in Him. We will be found in Him. We will have salvation for our souls and eternal life. Paul says in verses 10 and 11, he says, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and that I may share in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, and he did, Jesus Christ did all these things so that we may be like him in our righteousness in these things. Why? In verse 11 it says, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. 
that I may attain the resurrection of the, uh, the, the resurrection of the dead. If we are accounted for before God as righteous, not through our power, but by the power of Jesus Christ and His suffering and His death and His resurrection, we will also be resurrected with Him to eternal life and we will have life in Him forever. Praise be His name. Amen. Why do we need righteousness? So that we may have life. So that we may have life. And lastly, how do we live out this righteousness? How can we live out righteousness in the most practical way? Well, in Psalm chapter 1, in the first Psalm, we are presented with this idea of the righteous man and the wicked man. And one of the hallmarks of a righteous man is that he meditates on the law of the Lord day and night. He meditates on the law of the Lord day and night. And what does that cause in his life? It causes a complete change. For he bears fruit in season. And in whatever he does, he is a conqueror. Because Christ Jesus works in our lives. If we are in him, and if we have this word, being led by the Holy Spirit that is in us to understand this word of God, our lives will be changed and we will be transformed and we will bear fruit. Glory. How do we live it out practically? Meditate on the law of the Lord day and night. Amen. And then you will see change in your life. You will see that you will begin to pray more. You will want to be closer to God. You will want to understand His word. You will want to come to church to hear His word being preached. You will want more and more of Christ, and Christ will change you from the inside out. We need righteousness, and we need this righteousness to be a true righteousness that comes not of ourselves, but of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ work in our lives. Amen.